Hi guys, last week we did a video on this um, small DC-DC converter and um, in the video I said there is a sort of separate ground structure in this area and I bridged the two grounds using a soldering bob. Got um, some feedback saying well it doesn't look like a you know, separate grounds because it's actually connected using vias uh, to um, the second and third layer. Okay. So yeah, it is not the best demo board, I guess, for investigating this uh, this idea. So today we just got this new one. Okay, so I will also um, attach the uh, the YouTube link uh, um, here, so you can hear or you can watch their uh, field engineers discussing the uh, the benefit of having such a design. I think it's a really interesting uh, video, right? Uh, I would highly encourage you to 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 watch this uh, video. Um, but anyway, you can see from from this uh, PCB, there's a clear uh, separate copper. Let's call it a copper area, okay? And this clear uh, copper island, well, this clear separated uh, copper island, is you know has no connection to this ground area. However, it is using vias down to another copper island, which is slightly larger than this top layer, okay, on the second layer, but with two connections to the ground on the second layer, and then the third layer is a complete uh, ground. And uh, this can be found on their data sheet. So really, uh, we, we're not, again, we're just a, a bunch of engineers who really wanted to to see the the difference that this kind of design can make, you know, um, but of course in the in their video they also mentioned this uh, sort of like a butterfly, I call it butterfly capacitor layout, which has some benefits in terms of uh, E field shielding and uh, things like that, and also magnetic field cancellation. Um, yeah, so really, and in this episode, let's let's uh, again perhaps do a conducting emission. Uh, and compare um, the difference between this current configuration and later we're going to again try to uh, basically c uh, connect this uh, copper island to this ground by having a completely soldering ring around it and compare the difference. Let's see uh, is, if there's any significant difference as, uh, as what they claimed in their uh, demonstration. Okay, let's go. Okay, so we now set this um, new board in a CISPR 25 conducting emission setup. Uh, and we, because we had the test reports from the manufacturers, we wanted to have the load um, consumption the same as what they tested. And they tested basically at a 3.5 a, 3.5 amps load. That means more than 15 watts load uh, power consumption. So for that load, we in this case we're using a tech box um, uh, load. So this load is supposed to be quiet. However, I do need to emphasize that um, you can see between the load and the PCB there is a wire connection. We tried to make this wire as short as possible, but this could uh, introduce slightly different results compared to the uh, test house. Maybe they are using a resistive load and uh, that resistive load is very uh, close to the board that will give you some difference especially in a higher frequency range because of this introduced uh, uh, wire connection to the load in this case okay so without further ado let's do a uh, conducting emission test so, um, okay so let's do the uh, measurement using direct FFT full compliance measurement okay so this gives me uh, actually three results. I believe one is the average, one is the peak, and the other one is actually the quasi-peak. So um, because it uses FFT function, the sweep actually uh, is extremely fast. It's worth noting that I, I did have a uh, ambient check. I noticed that there are small noise somehow in the 1.3 megahertz gets into my tent so this is not coming from the DUT just for you to uh, to be aware of okay so as you can see this is a CISPR 25 class 5 voltage uh, uh, measurement and uh, 
Yeah, so it does not take long. It does not take long to perform the full compliance suite. Huh? And um, don't forget, um, this is with the uh, quasi peak detector enabled as well. So I would say uh, it's really fast. It's really fast. Okay. All right. So you can see I did my best to. Um, Bridge the two ground, okay, on top layer only. Of course, I can only do that. Let's um, let's have a look. So uh, let's just have a look at comparison because um, that's very interesting. So we actually compared two scenarios. One is with the filters, and the other one is without the filters. So with the filters, we measured conducting emission at this point, which is the VEMI. So that's taking the two stage. Uh, front end filter into uh, account and we measure the conducting emission and the second case is i lifted the inductor of the pcb therefore the filter is disengaged disconnected from the uh, pcb so i'm only measuring the true sort of conducting emission coming from the switch mode power supply only okay and of course we have three configurations the first one is the separate grounds or separate grounds on top layer and the second one is we bridge the whole grounds and the third uh, case is not only we bridge this grounds and this ground we also connect this separate ground copper to this ground so it's more like everything is sharing one ground in, in this configuration okay and um, as you can see the results Again, we are only measuring conducting emission, uh, but surprisingly, surprisingly, if there's anything that we found, the one ground configuration on top layer at least is actually better, especially from uh, 500 kilohertz to about two megahertz. You can see that, for example, here, all the measurement results is below 10 dB microvolts, whereas with uh, the separate grounds on the top layer, you are exceeding the 10 dB microvolts. So the difference is about 3 dB-ish. Uh, but then the rest frequency range are pretty much the same. And these two are actually identical. There's no difference, okay? So why, you know? You would be thinking for this, this kind of results comparison, why do we make such an effort to create this uh, cutout area on top layer? Okay, I guess that's the question we need to ask for the MPS uh, engineers. They may th argue that it's better for radiated emission, but then again, I'm not really convinced because if you look at without the filters, okay, in this case, uh, notes that I'm not doing the uh, full uh, full compliance scanning. I'm just doing FFT scan, so that's uh, very quick results, peak and average results only. But but you know, three different configurations the results are pretty much the same, pretty much the same. And it's also interesting to know that the big difference between with filter and without filter, then you understand the fact that this EVM, this evaluation board, performed so good in terms of the radiated emission and, uh, and conducting emission, are mainly due to these two-stage filters. Without these filters, you can do all sorts of grounds, you know, separate or, or continuous grounds. The, the emissions are always high. So you rely on the future configurations. Um, you know, but that's the question we need to ask for MPS engineers is that clearly we can see this is not really bringing any benefits from the conducted emission point of view. And I also doubt it will bring significant improvements for the radiate emission because most of the time, engineers put this kind of switch mode power supply in the overall PCB or uh, product, then your radiated emission depends on cabling and also nearby circuits. So yeah, myself, I'm still not fully convinced of going extra miles to having cut out areas on top layer and then stitching them to the second and the third uh, layer. Um, it's lots of effort, seems to me, to gain perhaps zero um, uh, um, improvements. In, in cases, it could make things even worse. Okay, so yeah, um, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you, see you next time.